Hey Joel, I'm Guys. In this video, I'm gonna be working on all the stuff that needs to get done before the engine goes in. I was making very good progress, but then, as you can see from the title of this video, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I lost all train of thought from that. What was that? Like I was saying before I got interrupted, the title of this video is not good. So stay tuned to see how I made a very catastrophic error. <laughs> While I was editing the last video of assembling the engine, I realized that I didn't turn the engine over after I put the timing together. So I just threw the valve cover on, but that's actually pretty bad because I need to spin it over and make sure that the engine is still timed. All right, please don't have any destructive yeah, so I had this happen before. It's getting caught on the nut in the back. When I was building an engine two years ago, I had the same problem and I was driving myself crazy because the engine kept getting stuck halfway through the rotation. And I eventually realized the, the dowel pin on the back of the engine is hitting on the engine stand. So yeah, that's just so annoying. <laughs> so that only becomes an issue when there's a lot of weight on the engine. So I'm gonna try and use the jack to lift the front of the engine up a little bit just so I can get a few spins I don't know it's not as smooth as I want it to be I'm taking this valve cover back off. Like right there, there's a little bit, a lot of resistance, low key. Right there. All right, off comes the valve cover. What a damn shame. I guess it's a good thing that I took the valve cover off because the gasket is ripped right here. So I don't know how this works because the seal is on the outside of the bolt, but I still think that oil comes in contact with that. So if that's broken, then that's no good. So I do need a new <laughs> valve cover gasket. And yeah, with that breaking oil that I put on there, that cover looks so much better now. <laughs> it doesn't look as pasty as before. Yeah, that's way better. But let's try and spin it over again. Put it back at top dead center. I'm gonna put the timing blocks on and see if it's still in time. The results say, oh, it actually is good. Actually, we're good to go. So the blocks are sitting perfectly flat on the head and that's good. I rotated it at least 10 times and it feels like there's a little bit of resistance but I think it's just cause it's a brand new engine. The rings have a lot of resistance and the whole engine just has more resistance than an engine that's worn in. I guess me taking the valve cover off just saved me a valve cover gasket leak. I guess you could have said that I was going too soft. Because it's definitely operating very smooth. All the squishes that I hear is the lifters all compressing. That's so cool. I've never had working lifters before in an M52. It's back at top dead center. We're all good to go. Let's go. This transmission is a perfect representation of how much this car used to leak. And this is why I want to try and clean everything up and do a proper reseal on everything because this is just absolutely ridiculous. This thing was leaking just perpetually. Is that the word? I don't even know. <laughs> just there's a thick layer of oil on everything. So I'm going to get this cleaned up and the parts washer took the little tray out. That's how dirty it's got after doing the full engine rebuild. But I'm going to take the transmission, clean it up so I can fix the detent pins. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Yo! Let's see what this looks like. It fits! Yo, the ZF is king! <laughs> Ow! 
there we go finally it's all cleaned up there's finally no oil I'm gonna try and keep it like this too the scratching in here was from when my clutch exploded it exploded twice and that's when I changed to a twin disc here's like a before shot of how nasty this fork is Here I have the detent repair kit. This is gonna clean up the shifter a lot in the E30s. I'm gonna start with the difficult of the more two. These three are pretty easy. It's just those three right there. But these two kinda were a nightmare last time. So I'm gonna start here because I have the most patience right now. This top one is reverse and the bottom one is fifth gear. There's a snap ring on there. Gotta take that off. The reverse spring is stronger than the fifth gear spring, so I gotta be careful with this one. Oh, it's not that spring loaded. The reverse spring on the left is noticeably bigger than the fifth gear spring. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> I literally pulled it out by hand. That's really good. If it has the fifth gear lean problem, these are going to be stuck in there. Oh, oh, look at that. These came out like butter. So this crazy Harbor Freight pick actually grabs it perfectly. It goes right on there and just pulls it right out. Now the part that I struggled the most at with the E46 was getting that little inside sleeve out. There's the line down there, and you gotta get a screwdriver behind it and bang it out and pull it out. Yeah, this part is still just as bad as I remember. <laughs> I've done like barely anything at all, but I can't get under the sleeve to curl it back. I think my tool is too blunt. I need to go make it sharper or something. I sacrificed this little thing in my toolbox to grind the face down so that I could have a pointy screwdriver so it has a really flat edge and it made it so easy to get right behind that sleeve so this thing just hammered right there right behind the sleeve and it's now picking it up relatively easy it's just having the right tool for the job that really matters I'm just trying to crack that seam all the way down so I can grab it with something and pull it out. I just hit this thing pretty deep past the sleeve, I think. So it might actually be pretty loose now. <laughs> Yo, that was way easier having the proper tool. I bent it a little bit, so I went on the vise and straightened it out a little bit on the anvil, and it came out. I'm just trying to get behind it. Dude, it literally got right behind it. No, it's going in. Don't go in towards the transmission. What the fuck? I need to be careful. That shit went in. Yes. That's what I was trying to do. I was just trying to stick the screwdriver in there and pry it down to give me enough room to grab it so I don't drop this in the transmission. All right, so moral of the story is if you want to save a lot of time, sacrifice a tool and grind it down so you can get behind that sleeve. I'm going to use a little piece of thousand grit around the 10 millimeter to clean up the marks that I made in the cylinder. It's actually way easier just to wrap the sandpaper on my pinky. I just want to knock all the high spots down because there is a sleeve that is going to get pushed back in so I just don't want the sleeve to get caught on anything. I grinded it down until I can't feel any kind of edge now. It all just feels like a low spot. So now I feel that the sleeve is going to go in smoothly and not interfere with anything. The two sleeves are the exact same part number 
so I'm gonna choose either or. But they do use different tools. These are the tools used to install these and they allow it to go in the right depth because you don't want it to go too far or not far enough. So this is the reverse one and this is the fifth gear one. So here's the reverse one. This is just gonna slide right on. Make sure the slit is where I want it to go and I'm gonna cover it in some automatic transmission fluid so it'll go in easier. This slit was facing towards the left, so I'm gonna make sure. I don't think this one matters much. I think the other one is where it's very important. There, it sounds way more solid because it's hitting the transmission, so that means the sleeve's bottomed out all the way. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the fifth gear one right here. And the fifth gear one uses the 22, and the reverse uses the 23. There we go. Both brand new sleeves are fully installed. And these two are very noticeably different. The reverse one has a bigger hole, and the slant is perfectly flat. You can see that there's no bump in the middle. And then the fifth gear one, you can kind of see a change of face right there. There's a little bump in the middle, and the hole is smaller, obviously. I gotta clean this in the parts washer. It's like sticky a little bit. Damn. So the reverse one is gonna go with the slant pointing downwards. Just gotta make sure that slant is straight down. There you go. And then now the fifth gear one has to be facing up. There we go. The stiffer spring is gonna go in reverse. And then the thinner spring is gonna go in fifth gear. This is super sketchy, but the trans leaks fluid out of the vent right here if I tip it over all the way on its side. So I got the vise positioning it there a little bit. Now I'm gonna try and get these caps on right here. Is this how you get it in? I don't see this, the ring seat. I'm gonna try and just push the ring in there, and like force it on. That's the way. Just drop the clip in there, close it, and then just hammer it on and it, it got on. <laughs> I think I hit that too far. I might have did an oopsie. I hit it a little far and now the cap is down. Goes into reverse, and it has the little lean over to fifth, but I don't know, I guess that's something I could probably just leave and hope that it pushes itself back out. So you can see that the cap is pushed in a little too far because I hit it up too much. So there's just more load on that fifth gear detent. So I hope it just pushes out naturally because there's no way for me to get behind it. So now that the two hardest ones are done, I can do the three over here. This is one of the BMW specialty tools. I'm gonna see if it works to take these out. I don't know why I didn't use this last time, but let's see if this works. Almost, okay, so it's poking a hole through. How the hell do I get this to come out? <laughs> that tool made a little hole. I'm putting this huge screw in now. Hopefully I can get better grip onto the slide hammer. Yes! Okay, no, it comes with a new spring, so I don't have to worry about that. So a screw big enough will hold on to the spring and bring that cap out. This first cap is off, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take the other ones out now. Money. Yes! Damn, that was brutal. Now that all the caps are off, I can breathe now. 
Just a little magnet to pull this thing out. So I think the biggest difference with this is gonna be that what came out of the transmission is just one piece. It doesn't have a sleeve or anything, but the new piece has its own sleeve that this goes into, so it makes it so that there's less slop and the shifter is gonna feel a lot better. This is why I'm really excited to do all this. So once again, these all three are the same. So with all three of these, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that I line up this line with either the right or left side of the transmission, either or. Because if I put the line facing forward or back, it's gonna cause uneven wear on the shift pins and it'll potentially make this brake open, which that's no good. I'm gonna put some ATF around the outside. There we go. The sleeve has a little collar on top so it bottoms out on that and then can't go in any further. I'm gonna take all three of these pins and soak them in automatic transmission fluid. I'm putting all of my lines towards the right side of the transmission. There, very audible change. Spring, dunk it in there too, might as well. And lastly, these caps apparently get hammered in until they hit that sleeve or that bushing. Let me drop these on in. Done. Finally, it's done. I've wanted to do this to this transmission for so long and I'm so excited that it's finally done. So now, we have to move on to the next thing. <laughs> Every time I think about the engine going back in the car, I'm always thinking about this chassis harness. I already had one sorry ass attempt at fitting this chassis harness through this frame rail right here and having it come down around here to tuck it away in the engine bay, but I made the hole too small. I should have used a hole saw, but I don't have any, and I used a step drill bit, but it's not big enough, so I'm going to try and open it up with my Dremel a little bit so I can get some extra room in there on both sides. I also did mess up the paint here because I was deleting my ABS, painting this down here, and I for some reason masked it off right in the middle of the tub, so it's very visible. So after I fix that, I'm going to come in, scuff all this down, make sure it's all scuffed up, and just hit it with the spray paint, not masking anything off because that's what I should have done from the beginning. I purposely didn't put clear coat on this engine bay and only use spray paint so that I can do small stuff like this and have it hopefully not stick out too much. This is so sketchy. I really hope this doesn't get caught and like dig out. I don't know. I really hope it's just smooth and doesn't get caught. Ah, like that. All right, so I cranked up the speed and it went a lot smoother. Damn, this metal flakes are everywhere. Let's see how good of a job I could do. This is terrifying. Woo! That is sketchy. That hole is much bigger now. If that doesn't fit it, then I really don't know. But, gotta vacuum all those shavings out. It actually doesn't look too bad. I thought it was gonna be hella wavy, but I can live with that under the rubber. I'm using the cap to cover the other side, and I'm trying to get all the bare metal gone. It looks like it did a pretty good job, too. Just a few taps. This side is fully covered. I can't see any bare metal. 
And this side also looks to have no bare metal, which is good. I'm gonna start off by cleaning the whole area with this foam prep. So I'm gonna try and only paint this whole tub. I don't want to go too far though, I don't want to take too much paint off and go through. This is the painted side down here, scuffed side up here. Now I gotta clean it one more time and then I'm gonna just spray it with paint. I got everything that I think would get really bad overspray on, but I'm gonna try and be very careful now to only hit the areas that I scuffed up and to not make it look worse. That looks really good so far. God damn it, I did the same mistake with the tape. I didn't think it would leave such a harsh line. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna try and get some isopropyl alcohol and rub it off. I wanna get this overspray off. I just wanna get that harsh line out that I just created again. All right, I'm leaving it at that. That's all I feel comfortable doing. There's no more harsh line. It's definitely better to use that cardboard. Hopefully, I'm hoping that this looks kind of normal once it dries because this is super shiny and down here it isn't, but I only painted this like two months ago, so. Let's see if this works. I'm going to tape some of these wires to this. All right, so I'm going to try and put some electrical tape on around the harness and onto the tape measure and pull it through like that. Let's see. but I didn't even think about the rip fully going all the way through. I knew that this already had <laughs> that messed up. All right, since it broke, I just extended it some more, and now I'm about to just tape it to the broken uh, tape measure. I feel a lot better about this working now. Electrical tape around the tape measure all the way up. Let's see if this works. This is a bad idea. I should not have used a tape measure. It's way too big. It's just making it so much harder to pull it through. I should just use a fucking piece of string. Piece of string. <laughs> Please, just come out. The plug was getting stuck up here above the wheel. I think that's it, try it. Okay, yeah, this is further than we've ever gone. I'm gonna have to tape all this together then. I just took the time to go through and put tape on absolutely everything so that hopefully I don't get caught on anything like it did with that other strand. The harness is almost all the way through, but this last ABS plug is very big and it's not gonna fit as a whole unit. So I gotta take the whole plug off and just leave the pins there. I gotta take a picture of these pins even though I'm not even gonna be using ABS. There we go. There we go, I didn't want any of those loose pins to get caught, so electrical tape on everything. Hopefully I can get it through now. There we have it. I really did not think this hardness was gonna make it through that little hole, but electrical tape along every connector was the only way that it was gonna work. Since I deleted ABS, I'm also going to keep these ABS wires back here and zip tie them to this hole. Here I have the old chassis harness from my old E30, the convertible that I had back before this car. I ended up getting a coupe chassis harness off of eBay and then I just put the convertible one in here and I didn't throw it out because I knew that these wires would be very useful. And here it is because I'm going to need to extend 
at least a few of these wires. This is the fan wiring right here. I'm gonna need to extend this ground and the green wire. If you guys have never seen anything about a chassis harness before and you're interested, I did make a video replacing the harness in this, taking this one out of this car and putting the new one in. So it was a lot of fun. It's very intimidating at first, but at the end of the day, it's literally just wires. This thing just comes in and slides right on. There it is. Easy as that. It has the core support now. I'm gonna put at least two bolts in for this core support. <laughs> So for this first headlight, the wire is just barely too short. So the wire comes around right there and goes around this little piece of sheet metal. The low beam one will fit. It's a little bit stretched on that wire, but the high beam is also very stretched. So they need just a little bit of slack. So I'm gonna drill a hole through right here so that just these two wires could go and hopefully it has the slack to go through there so that I don't have to splice anything. Before I go drilling the hole in there, I wanna see how smoothly using a little bit of vacuum line around this hole goes. I stuck it in there and wrapped it around and I have it around that long. There we go, it's open. Let's see if it fits. It's looking like it's gonna be kinda of difficult. I had to make another little piece of grommet because the one I cut out wasn't long enough, but it's better than nothing. There's two pieces instead of one, and I hope it protects the wire because that would suck if it didn't. No way! I think I fucked up. I think I tied all those ABS wires. I think I tied them right here. How am I gonna get this? Dude! So now that that has the rubber up there, I can pull way harder on here and not worry that it's going straight into metal. I'm hoping that I can just loosen it, pull it out of the electrical tape that I've made. Ah, oh, it's very painful. I didn't even realize this wire is in there. Oh my God. I'm pretty sure this might be a big roadblock. Let's see if the ABS wires can come out now. I got a screwdriver in here helping a little bit. I thought the junction was like over here. I didn't know a screwdriver was gonna reach it. It's around right here. have any ripped wires just come loose yes yes that was so stressful that was ridiculous so now this can just boom now I know that none of the connectors are gonna touch each other when I give the car power that's the biggest thing I was scared about even though I'm not using ABS I need it to still be in the plug There we go, that's how then up top, hopefully, more rigidity. The hole has to at least fit the headlight clips. This is just one of those things that the second go around, you always do everything you wanted to do. This looks so much better. I blew a hole in my chassis, but I'm gonna do the same thing that I did up, up top with the paint and rubber grommet. But down here, the headlight wires, it's just two little wires, and that's basically everything that's gonna show. I got the intercooler, radiator, and E-fan mocked up so that I can get the wiring exactly how I want it to be. The E-fan wiring just needs to get extended the distance from here to here, so I'm gonna take that measurement and then just cut out two wires to make this that long. My intercooler just sits there with no mounting because once the pipes are on, it literally hugs on to the core support, and over here, this is the low beam. The low beam actually is long enough. Now I just need to extend this high beam wire so that it can go around this frame rail because this one clears it, this one doesn't. There we go, two OEM wires matching the color that I need. That's so nice. So I had already cut the pigtails off to use the headlights on this car since it, they are late model headlights. The wires are all clean now. All right, there we go. Here we go.
I kind of just like to mash the wires into each other and keep it as tight as possible because if there's a lot of gaps in the wires, the whole thing won't heat up properly. I don't know why it takes so long to melt. Someone said before that this was plumber's flux, but I don't care, yo, I'm gonna start using it again because <laughs> the bottom one I used the paste flux and the top one I didn't. The paste makes it so that it all just heats up way more evenly. I'm good to go. So me putting that flux on there is letting the whole wire heat up a lot easier because before I couldn't get the whole wire to heat up and for the solder to melt but with this it does let it there we go way quicker this clip is only a minute and a half long and before I was sitting here for like five minutes trying to get this wire to heat up all the way. I didn't get the fucking extra heat shrink in. Ah, I'm so mad. I got one on but not the other one. Fuck. It's turning black from the heat. There's no way that this is the right flux but that's what's getting the job done. This is so annoying. I, <laughs> I forgot that I cut this top one, so I also had to cut the bottom one so it matched. So this one's not super long. That was so incredibly annoying, but it's done and it looks good now, finally. And the worst part is, it barely fits after all that. <laughs> this is just so fucking annoying. I'm gonna use some Tessa tape. It's some cloth tape that BMW uses from the factory. Done, finally, it reaches. All stripped. I should have just crimped it from the beginning, but whatever. It's done now. The baffle on my oil pan is hitting right here on that crank scraper that I installed. And I don't know. I can't find any information if this baffle is good enough to run just this single one. But I'm working with what I got. So I think I'm going to try and remove the whole baffle and only run this one. But yeah, I'm not sure. There's not very many write-ups about this crank scraper. If I cut the baffle and make it so that it fits with that other one, I think that'll be best of both worlds, but it's gonna make a really big mess inside of the pan. I'm gonna have to clean it regardless though, so I'm gonna try and cut it first, and if that doesn't work, then I'll drill the rivets out and remove it completely. I'm just gonna measure the distance from the bolt hole to where the crank scraper ends. Okay, so it's about three inches. So I know that it has to clear all the way past three inches. I'm just gonna try my best at cutting a good amount of the baffle out while leaving a lot left. Right before I do something, I always spend so much time researching if it's the best option. Like, <laughs> I can't find anything about if I should have only just the crank scraper or, you know, like stuff like this. I have no idea if I should cut it or fully remove it. But I'm going to cut it because once I fully remove it, then I can't have it be cut. Here we go, I got it cut out. Now I gotta clean everything in the parts washer again. So I originally was gonna cut up here, as you can see, but I changed my line just so that I can keep that wall right here. Because hopefully the oil that comes off of the crank scraper will land here or up here and 
make its way down. I don't know. If this is a bad design, let me know and I'll take the oil pan off again because I truly have no idea. I'm just trying to make it work for now. I'm gonna take my time and clean this very thoroughly off camera. I always used to use some RTV for my oil pan and I'm sick of it. I don't wanna deal with cleaning all that up every single time. So I got an actual gasket this time and I really hope this thing doesn't leak <laughs> because I think this used to be a really big leak on my old engine and in my old setup. I can install this gasket now for the oil pickup. This gasket only covers everything in one direction. This other direction isn't really lined up all the way. Ten newton meters. Thing just turned off. The last step now before putting the oil pan fully on is to put the rear main seal in so that I can put the RTV under the oil pan where those two meet. But unfortunately, I needed to get off the stand real quick. While I'm here and while I see it, I'm gonna put these two coolant temp sensors. This one's the E30 for my dash, and this is the E36 one for my ECU. Oh no, there's Van Nels lines in the way. A torque wrench is not fitting on these, so I'm just getting them nice and tight. Tight enough for the crush washers to seal. There we go, those are good to go. This cover is going in the parts washer. Nice and dirty. All clean. Ready to get installed. The seal is fully on, now I can install it. I just put two bolts on the oil pan because it's leaking pretty bad right there. So I'm trying to do this quick. To get the seal fully on the dowel. Please don't mess it up. This piece of plastic just makes sure that the seal fully goes around the crankshaft. Here we go. All the oil pan bolts came out of the parts washer. Another YouTuber, 50s kid, had an oil leak issue at his rear main for years and he came to the conclusion that the 13 millimeter bolts need sealant. So I'm gonna go by his word and I'm gonna put sealant on the 13 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna put a good amount. I do not want an oil leak here. Here we go. The 13 millimeters go to 13 foot pounds. And then the 10 mils, 10 millimeters. Good to go. Before I get too carried away, I want to do all the stuff that is annoying before all the fun stuff. I want to install all the sensors on this side of the engine now while it's on the stand and while it's looking good. These are going to go to 15 foot pounds. Putting a new O ring on this camshaft sensor. I actually have no idea if this is gonna fit with the Vano solenoid in now. Yeah, it's definitely not. <laughs> Damn it! I gotta do it before I get carried away. So I gotta take this Vano solenoid off now to put the cam sensor in. And this is the only tool that I think will get it. There's no way I fucked up. See now the reason why I like to overthink everything is because of reasons like this and also I forgot that this is an oil filter housing. An oil filter housing. There's an oil filter in here, and I put it through the parts washer, and I did all that cleaning, and I never even opened this. That's like the most important part of the whole cleaning. So I bolted it onto the engine without even opening it. I really hope there's not a whole bunch of metal shavings in this oil filter housing from when my engine previously blew up. There is still a filter in here. Fuck! That's not what I wanted to see. I really wish I would've, damn it! This is painful. This is so fucking painful. Even with how much I overthink, I still didn't think hard enough. Fuck, yo! Fuck, I think this is a lot bigger problem. I think me opening it just 
took all the oil that was in here into there. Oh my fucking. I think me opening this just opened the floodgates. <laughs> I have to take this off again. This is insane. I have to take this off and I need to do it quick too. I don't want there to be any metal shavings in my engine. Fuck. Undo the vanos, the housing has to be tight. Okay, well, I guess I'm gonna be able to put my cam sensor back in, but I don't feel good about this now. Please, no oil in the engine. Fuck. I think I see fluid in the oil pan. That's not good. I think a lot came out. Son of a bitch, yo. Of course there's an O-ring in here that I don't have. I really hope there's not too much black ass oil in here. Cause then I think me taking the cap off, let in a bunch of air and all the oil that was up there just went straight through the engine. And that's not fucking good. That's really, that's catastrophic. That is a, I had to take the whole oil filter off first before. No, no. There's probably metal shavings between everything. Fuck. That's not good. No. No. Dude, I can see the fucking metal flakes, dude. I can't do this. And just like that. I don't even know, dude. I really don't know. That is such a bad fuck up. That is such a bad fuck up. This is just comical at this point. How literally the whole time I'm building this, I'm saying one slight oversight can ruin everything. And I didn't know I was gonna be fucking foreshadowing myself. The one thing I could have done differently is, in my mind, I know that I never took that oil filter out. I never took the oil filter out. But I started assuming. The moment you start assuming is when you lose because you assume wrong once and that could be the fucking difference of everything. Even sometimes life and death, if you assume that a tractor trailer is not gonna move out of your way, I don't know, something. That's how a lot of accidents on motorcycles happen. But I shouldn't have assumed that just because I had it in the parts washer for 30 minutes that there was no oil in it. I swore up and down that that thing had no oil in it, but I didn't know that the top oil filter part was sealed. So the moment you take the seal off and open it, it lets all the oil that's inside of there flow through like a floodgate and that's what happened here. So I need to disassemble everything and clean everything again in the bottom end because there's visible flakes in the oil that I just put into the fucking whole entire engine. But I guess I'm happy that it happened to me and it didn't happen to anyone else because I have the platform that I can show that one mistake is all it takes. One assumption is all it takes. I should have just taken the oil filter housing off the moment I knew that I didn't change the oil filter, but I didn't think that there was oil in it. I learned my lesson very quickly. I am never doing that ever again. <laughs> this is so painful. This is so utterly fucking painful. There we go. That's a very clear view of how many metal flakes are in the oil. Because obviously I destroyed my ringlands in my last engine. So yeah, I just forgot to take the oil filter out when I was cleaning the oil filter housing. Very bad oversight by me, but we're humans, we make mistakes. I just so happen to be recording them all and posting them online for all of you guys to be learning from my mistakes. If there's any of you that are gonna comment, you're so dumb, that was so obvious, you can keep that shit for yourself because I don't give a fuck about what you have to say. <laughs> I'm putting all my mistakes out here so that other people can learn. So if it makes me look like an idiot, so be it. It's life. We're humans and we make mistakes. All I can do is just move on. It already happened, so I'm gonna have to fix my mistakes. So 
that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So yeah, just so happens that my dad is getting surgery tomorrow, so I'm gonna be there for my dad. This engine can wait a little longer, and I hope you guys <laughs> are willing to wait because it's been taking super long, and I've been very aware of how long it's been taking. So, it's just life, man. <laughs> Stay tuned.